In this video, we're going to go over scripted OS installs. What a scripted OS install is, is a installation of Windows, or uh, Linux technically. We'll be going over Windows in this video. And what it'll be is taking place of having to go to a machine, putting in the DVD, hitting next a bunch of times, typing in the serial number and the uh, time zone and uh, keyboard layout and all the various different questions that Windows asks you when you do your installation will all be happen automatically. And so that's the scripted OS. So I like to use a scripted OS to start my master images from because it's nice and clean. I don't have any extra utilities on it, whatever Dell or HP items that came with it. It is just a clean OS. And I can do so with so little touch once it's set up that it's very easy just to make a new fresh uh, installation. And uh, later you could go also and script your Windows updates if you're so inclined to do so with a scripted uh, task. So let's go into this. So I've got my DVD installed for Windows 10 Enterprise version 1703. So it's important that the source of our installation be a single version OS, meaning that it's not a multi uh, version. So Windows 10, uh, like the later versions, 1809, 1803, have several different versions, Pro and Enterprise and Education, all on one disk. And those disks will not be supported for the scripted OS install. At the end of this, we'll discuss a couple options that could be done for those types of disks, if that's the only version of the disk that you have. But for now, I have a 1703. DVD because that was the last version that is on the Microsoft MSDN pages that I can download. So here it is. Here's my setup and here's my support folder. Here is my sources folder. Anyway, it's the, the DVD. So from our ghost, we will go ahead and go to scripted OS install and do a new job. Windows 10, 17.03. Enterprise. Now, a uh, pre-step, and this is available in the user guide, but we will need to go here to our installation folder. So deployment server, and then under deployment, it's not it, under deploy, we have a couple of different XML files. And these XML files are for Vista and later, for Longhorn and later, so the server OS's versus the client OS's. So we're going to make a quick copy here because I would like to leave the original original. And even though I'm doing a Windows 10 Enterprise, we will go ahead and open this up. I like Notepad++. Use your favorite no, uh, XML editor. So. Computer name is going to be whatever the record of the computer is for the machine. So we're going to execute ours on one of our pre-set up machines. And so that computer name will already be filled in. Product key, however, for scripted OSs, we have to come in here and put in a legitimate product key. So let me grab my product key and put it right into here. And the instructions for that are covered in the user guide. Now there's a couple of changes we can also make down here that might be useful. The register organization, so when you go to a machine and I bring up the properties, it talks about who the organization is. You could change that. Also the owner and then the time zone. Be careful of time zones. They have to be very specific. We are Pacific. Standard time does need to be matched. And then here are a couple of things that we do want to change. The administrator password here is going to be Symantec. That's what we've put in here. We can change it to your password. This is going to be stored in clear text, so be conscious of uh, the fact that this is uh, stored in clear text. Oops. So we have both the account that's being created and then the, so this we're going to have the, the, the administrator password is password because I've just said it that way. And then we're also going to have a, a local account that we're creating and it's going to have a password as well. So my password for the local account is going to be the 
capital password, and my username is going to be local. Let's do a lowercase. Local admin. And description is semantic user, semantic sure, and the group is administrators. So those are the things that I would recommend that we change. Uh, change the username, change the password, change the time zone, and change the, the required change. The only one that's required actually is the product key. The rest of them can stay the way they are. So we're going to save that and we're going to use it in our job. So here is our job. We're going to add a scripted OS install. It's going to be a Windows installation. We are going to select our version of Windows. Mine is Enterprise 64-bit and it is going to be English. We're going to use the default automation environment. I don't have any OS's yet so I'm going to add one. Windows 10 Enterprise 64 build 1703 so that I can make sense of it later. And we're going to go here and grab from the root of the drive the setup folder. There we go. All right. There we go, we've got it added. Uh, service packs don't apply. That would be for uh, if we were doing this with a 2000 or an XP. We're going to use the default uh, disk part tool. We're going to do uh, defaults there. Now here is an important part, path to the unattend.xml. So this is where our file that we were just editing comes into play. So go to my deployment server. We'll go to the deploy folder and we are going to grab there we go, Win10 Enterprise XML. Open that up. Next. And these are the switches that we're going to run, which is going to then install at the end of it the automation folder. We could have additional command lines in there also. And here we go. And finish. So I'm going to go ahead and actually run this over here against this 1803 machine. All right, I'm going to go ahead and run this Windows 10 1703 against my 18030 machine here. Run it immediately. I have a backup image of this machine so we can restore that uh, if we desire later. Let me bring up my machine. Once the agent service comes up, it'll default to saying unable to connect. But what's happening there is the agent is running and it hasn't heard back yet. And so it'll take a moment to connect. Now you can see here in the background disk part ran for a moment as it was uh, setting up the partitions on the drive. And then now we're going to be doing a, basically the steps that would be if we, as if we were running the install from a DVD. With the exception of we're not going to have to do anything. It's going to take care of it all for us. One thing that might happen, depending on your hardware, when the machine gets all booted up, if you don't have, if Windows doesn't have the included drivers necessary, you may find yourself in a situation, like I believe I'm going to be, where the network card in this machine doesn't have drivers built into Windows 10, and so we will have to address that. Because uh, my machine's a VMware machine, it unfortunately doesn't automatically install the network drivers. So I had to install the VMware tools to get those drivers available. There is the option, if uh, or opportunity, even on a physical machine, if the network drivers are not built into Windows, that your SOI job would not complete until after you add the right drivers to the machine. The way that you can look into adding drivers if necessary is to uh, follow the Microsoft documentation on how to add drivers to an unattended installation, because that's what we are doing is unattended installation. There's a drivers folder and some scripting that could be done, but we're not going to be going into that on here. We will uh, go over the main installation with scripted OS install and then uh, hope that your machine has uh, drivers built into Windows. Your uh, drivers can be copied to the machine manually, unfortunately, if, 
necessary, kind of like I've done here by installing them using the VMware installer and uh, work with that. Hopefully your drivers, however, are included in the Windows built-in drivers. So now that we've added our drivers manually, unfortunately, uh, we can see though that the client machine is loaded up and the scripted OS is complete and it's now talking back to the server. So now that we've covered how to install a single version OS, I will show you. Uh, so what, what I mean by single version versus multi-version, when you have a multi-version installation disk, this is a screenshot of my Windows 10 1803 multi-edition um, from MSDN. And so it has all of these different versions of the OS on it. And I would like to have specifically Enterprise being installed. So the scripted OS as is designed doesn't accommodate this situation. But with some updating to the unattend XML file, we can accommodate this situation. So the thing to do is to boot to your multi-version uh, disk and then figure out what number the item that you want to boot to is. So mine is the third option. So under our Windows 10 uh, Enterprise XML file that we made previously, we will go ahead and insert a line here into the OS images. And I've borrowed this from a forum post where we are telling it which version to install from. And so I won't go hugely into that, but I will put it in here and then we'll discuss a little bit about what we're looking at. So we need to put in this entire string, the install from, the metadata add, then the key of image index, and then the index number. Now, the index number needs to be the theoretically the number of the boot number of our um, image. So ours was the third one in the list. So we're going to go ahead and put three here. So yeah, it was three. So we're going to put the number three in. So that should put the third one in the image index to be our chosen OS. So by updating this, we will have a multi OS installation that will put in and select the proper one for us. So we'll go ahead and do a quick save as and save it as Windows 10 multi edition. Now I have mounted my multi-edition install disk. So we will now create a new job. We will add to it a scripted OS install. It's Windows, select an install OS, English. We are gonna add new. We will browse to the install disk, grab my setup, and do our import. Install, you can see we're in the WinOS 03 sources folder. So if we ever need to make changes to this set of files, we can do so here. And we're gonna allow it to do the disk part on its own. And we're gonna grab our Win 10 Enterprise Multi because it has that extra bit for the multi. And we'll go ahead and execute it on this guy. And once that machine comes online, it will accept that job and install 1803 without any user intervention, hopefully. So here we can see we've actually gone into the installer and we're moving past it. We aren't getting stuck at that page where we have to select which version. And at the very end here, we'll see if the index three is really the right index for, for this image, meaning that the third item on the list was enterprise and hopefully that's what ends up installed when we're all done here. So now that we've got our drivers installed and deployed, let's take a look real quick and see what version of Windows is installed here. MSINFO32 is a good spot to go. 
and here we go we can see we've got Windows 10 Enterprise and it's a 64 bits so we have success using our modified um, script that includes the image index so thank you very much that is how to install scripted OS's with a multi-version um, DVD